Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Ignite Kids Does Sunday. Let's get ready for loads of fun. and welcome to Ignite Kids Does Sunday. You've had a week off. I wonder, what did you do? Did you do anything cool? Did you go down the beach? I don't know. Did you have a paddling pool in your back garden? Did you go for a day trip? Did you stay at home in the cool? I wonder, what did you do? Uh, I bet you've had a great, great time. Okay, so we're continuing. Actually, we are ending our walk through the Bible today. It's our last one in the series. Uh, But we're going to still have lots and lots of fun with Trev a little bit later on, where he talks about Paul in prison. Oh, my word. But actually, it's a really, really good story. So tune in a little bit later on for that. We've also got our Minute to Win It challenges. Uh, Tune in for that a little bit later on as well and see if Robin and I can get the job done. Okay, but we're going to start off with a song. And do you know what? We haven't done this song for such a long time. I'm going to give you a clue. It's yeah, you've, you've guessed, you've guessed. It's Scream It! So let's stand up and let's scream it!
He'd been to Macedonia, he come back down here, he came across to a place called Troy, down the coast to Ephesus, round here to the places he'd been to in Galatia, and he was heading back round this side of Cyprus, back to Syria, and then he's going to go down to Jerusalem, where trouble was waiting. Once Paul arrived back in Syria, he didn't go straight to Jerusalem. He visited friends in the towns all the way down the coast. When he got to the place called Tyre, some of his friends said, Oh, Paul, I wouldn't go back to Jerusalem. There's a bit of bother down there, and some people are not very happy with you and preaching to people who are not Jewish. But Paul said, no, I'm still going. I've got to go to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. A little bit later on, another town, a prophet came and said, look, I'm going to take your belt. And he took Paul's belt and tied up his own hands with the belt and said, this is what will happen to you in Jerusalem. And Paul said, no, I've, I've still got to go on to Jerusalem. Paul traveled with his friends, probably were on foot, it would take a long time. And when they got to Jerusalem, he went to visit James, who would be one of Jesus' disciples. He's now leader of the church in Jerusalem. And he told them all the great things that have been happening on the journeys where so many people have become followers of Jesus. People we now call Christians. But then they warned him, ah, oh, but Peter, Dad, Paul, um, we've heard some stuff, some bad stuff. Some people said you've been persuading Jews to forget the law of Moses. In other words, he said, uh, stop being Jewish and become a Christian. And Paul said, no, I've not been doing that. Yeah, but that's what they're saying. And the next day, Paul started, they kept Paul in prison, really for his own safety. And then we had a trial. He first went to speak with the Sanhedrin, the Jewish leaders, and then the governor, the Roman governor, Felix. Then when he went, the Roman governor, Festus, and then the Jewish king, Herod. And finally, Paul had enough. He said, look, I've done nothing wrong. I appeal to the emperor. That meant he had to go all the way to Rome. And so eventually, after two years in prison, Paul made his final journey to Rome. And that's where the story of the New Testament comes to an end. With Paul in prison, but able to preach to people in Rome. Okay, let's think about today's story. So Paul... He was going around telling everybody about Jesus. Everywhere he went, that's what he did. And um, what does he end up? In prison. But you see, Paul's not bothered that he's in prison because he still manages to send out letters to all the churches around saying, you're doing a great job, or you just need to do this, or don't forget that Jesus loves you. And we've got all of those letters in the New Testament. Why not during the summer holidays, look them up? Mums and dads, why not show the boys and girls the letters in the, in the New Testament that Paul would have written from prison? Because uh, they're all very, very good. And we've got them today. But you see, we're continuing with our prayers for Christians that are not allowed to be Christian. And Paul kind of wasn't allowed to be Christian because he was put in jail. So let's pray. I wonder, if you've got your little book, open it up and see who it is today. See who it is today. Put your little sticker on and we're going to pray today for those Christians. So let's pray. Lord God, we pray for all of those Christians that are in prison because they believe in you. And I pray, Lord God, that you'd be with them, that you'd help them. And maybe their families at home, Father, their sons and daughters, the boys and girls that have got parents in prison, I pray that you would be with them too. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, good morning everybody and welcome to this week's Minute.
to win it challenge. We did not manage it last week because it was very, very hard. This week, Robin is already complaining and she hasn't even watched the video yet. So let's watch the video. Chopstick. In this challenge, the contestant will use chopsticks and exceptional hand-eye coordination as they attempt to transfer and stack four tubes of lip balm. One slip of the stick could cause the entire stack to tumble. Years of eating Chinese takeout may finally pay off. Failure to complete this task in 60 seconds will result in elimination. Okay, I think that's going to be quite hard. Robin thinks it's going to be... I can't use chopsticks, so it's impossible. Boo hoo. Right, so we're going to have a go anyway. So I'm going to set the timer and Robin is going to fail. Here we go. One handed. One handed. Can so I use the wrong end of the chopsticks? You can use whichever end you want, but you have to use one handed. Right, here we go. The game begins in three, two, one. probably fail as well but you know what is the take apart is the fun bit so here we go the game begins in three two one Okay, everybody, that's nearly all the, and all the time we have today. I hope you've enjoyed. Have a go at the Minute to Win It challenges and see if you can do it as well. Me and, me and Bob couldn't do it again. It's really, really hard. Anyway, uh, don't forget, sign on, book on to our family events. Here's the QR codes here. Uh, you can zap them with your phone. It'll take you straight to the page on Eventbrite. Uh, obviously, it's a park, so you don't really have to book on for picnics and things like that. But the only reason we're asking you to book on is so that I know who's coming, what age group are coming, so that I can bring the right equipment with me so that we can play lots and lots of games. Uh, mums and dads, can I ask you to make sure you book on a ticket for each person coming? That includes children as well. Um, and if you've got any problems, just email me. If you've booked them all in one name, just email me at this email and let me know the ages of your children. Okay, so we're going to pray now. So let's wiggle our hands. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Here we go. Ready? One, two, 
three. Lord God, we thank you for all the fun that we are already having at summer. Keep us all safe and let us have a great week next week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. See you next week, guys.